In 2024, there are no shortage of devices that can emulate even the most powerful consoles. But what if we didn't have to be tied down to any hardware at all? What if we could play retro games straight from the same place we browse Reddit, watch YouTube, or read emails? Well, that's where Emulator JS comes into play, a tool that I will be using to emulate games from any compatible browser. My goal will be to test the performance of the most powerful emulators Emulator JS has to offer, which includes Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and Nintendo DS. I will also be testing on multiple platforms, including mobile browsers. So join me as I attempt to push the modern web browser to its limits. As always, gameplay starts at this timestamp. Anyways, on to the setup process. The first thing I do is provision a web server to host the emulation website. Since I like to keep things DIY, I will be using tools anybody could have laying around the house. Such as this old office computer. Don't worry though, this isn't the one from the last video. I will be leaving that baby untouched so we can mess around with it more in the future. This one is a Dell Optiplex 5050 small form factor. It sports a 7th gen Intel i5 chip, 8GB of RAM, and a 256GB SSD. Plenty of resources for hosting a web server. I will be flashing the 5050 with Debian Linux, my preferred Linux distribution of choice. Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite Linux distro is and why to use it over the other ones. Anyways, before anything, I plug in my Debian flash drive to the back of the future server. I also secure my network cable to the Ethernet port on the back to ensure my other devices can reach the server over my home network. Once I ensure everything is connected, it's time to power on the computer and boot from the flash drive. This will lead us to the OS installation menu where I select graphical install because I am a GUI enjoyer and I will not be shamed. It's here where I run into my first boss, a password entry screen. Unfortunately, my build consists of the Fat Fingers gauntlets and my gear, the keyboard of Goo, did not help matters. So I ended up dying to this boss multiple times before proceeding. It was worse than Melania from Elden Ring. Thankfully, after the 200th try, I locked in enough and was finally able to get past that hurdle. In usual fashion, I celebrate by showing my chungus. After that ordeal, it was smooth sailing. And before the Debian install finishes, it decides to call me out for last week's incident where I left the install drive plugged in. After that's over, I power off the computer and remove the USB stick where the original Bontessera install is on. Just kidding, I totally forgot to do that at first, <laughs> loaded some GameQ games, and was met with this horrible intermittent stutter you can see in the background. Talk about passive aggressive. Now that Debian is set up and I can get to the desktop, I browse to the emulator.js github where I download the necessary files. After the files download, I activate my inner elite hacker by opening a terminal. From here, I need to elevate my user privileges. So I do that by logging into the root account. I once again encounter another password entry mini boss, which I lose a life to, but quickly defeat it on my next try. Once I finally have root access, I update my packages like a good little Linux user. I then install Node.js, a runtime environment that Emulator.js will use to run its built-in web server. When that download completes, I change my working directory in the terminal to the Emulator.js folder and run the necessary commands to finally start the web server. Now the website is officially live. Before leaving, I confirm that my website is working by going to localhost 8080 on the server's browser. This shows me the emulator JS screen with the box to drop the ROMs in, which tells me it is good to go. I then place the physical server in the most discreet spot in the house, so nobody disconnects it by accident. Finally, I sit down and connect to the server from my desktop browser and mobile browser, which loads up the emulation website where I can drop my ROMs in to load a game. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to test the games. To start, I will be showing Nintendo 64 emulation. Here is Mario 64 running in the browser. Wow. <laughs>
As you can see, on both desktop and mobile, the game ran perfectly. Now, let's try Smash Bros. 64. Three, two, one. I was pretty satisfied with how Nintendo 64 emulation was playing out on both these platforms. So I decided to try it on an iPhone too, but that didn't go so well. Yeah. For now, I will stick with the Samsung Galaxy. Anyways, let's jump to the PS1 games. I will start with Spyro. The desktop browser played perfectly, but I did notice some brief slowdowns in the mobile browser. Regardless, it was still definitely playable. Next, let's try Silent Hill. Again, there were some brief slowdowns on the mobile side, but nothing that made the games unplayable. By this point, I wanted to try Nintendo DS emulation. So next was Super Mario 64 DS. <laughs> As a preemptive warning, the mobile browser on the Samsung had way more noticeable slowdowns this time, making the audio a bit jarring for the next bit.
Let's go. It was a very good experience on the desktop version, but not so much on the mobile side. Regardless, let's try another game. Here is Mario Kart DS. As you saw, the desktop version has some slowdowns here and there, so you can probably already guess that the mobile version won't be that good either. I will show some gameplay, but fair warning, it sounds horrible. Ah, the sweet sound of choppy emulator performance. As you can see, emulating games on hardware is overrated. All the cool kids nowadays emulate on web browsers, and Emulator.js helped us accomplish just that. The results of these tests did surprise me. I did not think any web browser could handle emulation like that. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments. I was thinking about expanding upon this and making a version that goes outside of my home network. As a final note, thanks for all the love and support on my first video. That was great to see, and I'm happy you all enjoyed enough to get that video as of making this one 16,000 views and 280 plus subscribers. Seriously, I can't thank you guys enough. And since it's been requested so heavily, I am following up that video with another one. Here's a hint, it will involve PS3 emulation. As always, please like and subscribe so I know to keep making these awesome videos for you. Every little bit helps. In the meantime, I'll be looking into what other crazy thing we can play emulators on. See ya!